Hey, welcome back. In this video, we're introducing the main player in early calculus, the concept of a limit. The idea of a limit is a mathematical concept that goes beyond just evaluating functions and really, as you'll see, introduces the idea of infinity and how to work with it in algebraic expressions. Before I get too deep into the concept of limit, I first want to play around with our first example here. Here we have a rational function, x squared plus x minus 6 over x minus 2. This is a rational function. This has a domain of all real numbers except x equals 2, because if you plug in 2 to this function, you get a division by 0, which is not allowed. Though I do want to play a little bit with this function. Let's reduce this function to make it easier to get a graphical representation. If we took this and if we factored the numerator, we would get x plus 3 times x minus 2. We then could reduce this by canceling the common factor of x minus 2 between the numerator and the denominator, giving us uh, the expression x plus 3. By the way, what this means is that this expression right here, x squared plus x minus 6 over x minus 2, is exactly the same as x plus 3, except at the point x equals 2. If we were to provide a graphical representation of this function, what we would get is a linear equation with a hole at 2. Importantly, what that means is that this rational function right here acts like the equation that has a slope of 1 and a y-intercept at 3, except it has a hole at 2, which means if I plug in 2, I don't get a value out of this function. Just to really hit on this point, if I wanted to evaluate this function at these three values right here, f of 5 is the value I get when I plug in a 5 for all of my x's and evaluate. Though again, and because 5 is not the value of 2, I could just plug it into here. f of 5 is equal to 8. If I wanted to evaluate f of 2, this is actually the only value, the only input value not in my domain. This does not input a value. If I plug in 2 into this expression, I cannot evaluate it because of the division by 0. So this does not exist. Finally, if I plug in negative 3 into this expression, again, the quick ways to plug it in here, I would get out 0. All right, let's now bring the concept of limit into this problem right here. What we're going to focus on is the limit value of this function around x equals 2, because that's the most interesting. Specifically, a limit is going to tell you how the function acts around a certain x value. While I could find the limit at 5 and negative 3, for this problem specifically, the interesting conversation is the idea of limit around the x value of x equals 2 because the function does not exist at that point. Let's start by giving the notation and a loose definition of the idea of a limit. So in the notation would look like this. We would say the limit as x approaches a. a is a constant value that the x, the input for the function, is approaching of f of x equals l. What this statement is saying is that if you plug in values for x near this value of a, not specifically a itself, but numbers very close to a, this function outputs values very near the value of l. A really important thing about this statement that we'll keep on emphasizing early in this quarter is that this has nothing to do with what's happening at a, we're only talking about, so a is a value, an x value or input value that we're concerned about. We aren't concerned though about what's happening directly at that x value. All we care about is happening, what's happening very, very close and near to that x value. So the question then I'm posing now is, what is the limit as x approaches 2 of this expression x squared plus x minus 6 over x minus 2? The question that we're trying to answer is, what values does this expression output for values very, very, very close to 2? Not at 2. We already know this function has no value at 2. But as we get closer and closer to 2, importantly, and we'll talk more about that later in this video, it's important to talk about both sides of 2 for val x values close to 2 but smaller than 2 and values for close to 2 but bigger than 2. As those values get closer and closer and closer to 2, not all the way to 2, but infinitely close to 2, by the way, 
what values does this expression output? Or what values do those, those values get closer and closer to? You may already have an idea of what this limit value is, but to help us think about it, let's look at the graphical representation and a table of values for this function. If we specifically look very closely at what's happening around the value of x equals 2 for both the graphical representation and the table of values, the question we're trying to answer is, as we look at these x values, and if we think about coming from before 2 and getting closer and closer to 2, or from above 2 but coming closer and closer to an x value of 2, what are the outputs of the function getting closer and closer to? If you look at the table of values, as you get closer to x equals 2 from 1.99, 1.999, the outputs of this function are almost getting to 5. We're getting very close to 5. If we look at just past 2, at 2.1, 2.001, and closer to 2, our output values are getting very, very close to 5. Therefore, we would say the limit as x approaches 2 of x squared plus x minus 6 over x minus 2 is equal to 5. Not that I haven't said it enough already, but it's really important to say. I am not saying in any way that this function is equal to 5 as x equals 2. What I am stating, according to the concept of limit, is that this function value, as I get to x values and get closer and closer to the idea of x equals 2, the outputs of this function are getting closer and closer to the value of 5. In the second example here, we're going to introduce some slightly different new notation and really emphasize the concept of the limit being important to attack a value from both sides of the x value that you're approaching. First and foremost, we have the left-hand side limit. The left-sided limit is the limit as you approach your a value from the left-hand side or from less than that a value, and we'll get into that more. We note that with this little minus sign here above the a that denotes the left-hand sided limit. The right-hand side limit is just the opposite. We're looking at the limit as we approach our a value from coming above or from the right-hand side of our a value. We denote that with a little plus sign right here. This concept is always a bit easier, I think, when talking about piecewise functions. I hope that you've dealt with piecewise functions, remember how to deal with them. g of x, in this case, is the function that acts like x squared for x values less than 3, strictly less than 3. For numbers 3 and greater, this function acts like the linear function negative 2x plus 11. So if we look at the graphical representation of this function, that you'll see that 3 is this defining point, the x value of 3. On the left-hand side of 3, or for x values less than 3, this is an upward-facing parabola. For values greater than 3, including 3, this value is this linear function with a negative slope. Importantly to talk about is what's happening at 3. It's important to remember for a function, a function cannot de be defined with two outputs for one input value, or specifically at x equals 3 in this case, we can't take two different values. The open circle on the parabola is saying that this function actually does not reach the value of 9. On the linear equation, though, this, this line does start at a y value of 5, or an output of 5, and then descends uh, with the negative slope. So then here's the concept of these sided limits. For this function right here, if we want to look at the left-hand side limit of this function as we approach 3, again from the left, this value would be 9. We're not saying that this function is defined and has an output of 9, but again, as you approach 3 from the left, this function is gradually increasing the output values to nearly getting to 9. If we look at it from the right, we would be going on the linear equation side of this graph. So approaching 3 from the right, we have a value for this function of 5. So we have these one-sided limits that are denoted by these little minuses or a plus, like in the exponent of the number or the a value that you're approaching. In this case, because of this piecewise function, we actually have different values for the limit on both sides. When you approach on this parabola right here, 
and you reach the x value of 3, the function value is reaching nearly 9. Again, that same concept of limit is we don't care what's happening at 3. But we care is as we approach the number 3, in this case from numbers like 2.8, 2.9, 2.99, what is the function value reaching? On the left-hand side, that's 9. When we go from the right-hand side, or from values above 3 and approach 3, we're on this linear equation, negative 2x plus 11. The values of this function are rising until they get to 5. This function actually, g of 5, the input of 5, gives us out this value right here, which is the same as this limit, but that's inconsequential. What's really important is what's happening just to the right of 3 on the graph. Finally, to take this all full circle, I want to leave you with a really important truth. The fact is, the limit at a value, at a value of 3 in this case, can only exist if both sides of this limit agree with each other. Specifically, the limit as x approaches a value of a function equals L if and only if, that's only true if the left-hand side limit equals the same value that the right-hand side limit equals. Meaning, in this case right here, if we're looking at the limit as x approaches 3 of this function right here, this limit does not exist. Again, we would say this limit does not exist because the left-hand side limit and the right-hand side limit don't agree. The limit always only exists if we approach the x value on the function from both sides or from looking at a table of values. And if those values sandwich to meet at the same point or to get to the same output value or approach the same output value. Since the left-hand side of this function approached a value of 9 and the right-hand side of this function approached a value of 5, those are not the same values. They're not equal to each other. Therefore, the limit does not exist.